What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss the stimulus package update, now the physical infrastructure package that is now passed the House, multiple different things going on here in our country, daily news, money, investing, the stock market. Remember, I will keep you up to date with everything going on here in our country and the stimulus package, the voting in the House of Representatives. We got a lot to talk about here and also what is going to happen here going forward with the stimulus package, the physical infrastructure package. I will keep you up to date with everything going on here in our country. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe down below. It's completely free to do so. Remember that new videos come out here on our channel every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you find these videos helpful, don't forget to hit the like button for us down below. Late last night, the House of Representatives literally passed, finally, the physical infrastructure package that has been sitting in the House of Representatives and had already passed the Senate and was waiting there since August. Uh, there's 223 yeas, 202 nays. That appears to look like a victory. And it is. We saw Speaker Pelosi high-fiving some of her colleagues on the floor. We heard cheers from inside the chamber because this one was for all the marbles on the bipartisan infrastructure bill. And at this point, Democrats have done it officially. All right. Ali Vitale, uh, our reporter on the Hill, with the call of the victory for the Democrats, they're going to... Uh, Tracy Chapman, this bill, put it in a fast car, drive down Pennsylvania Avenue and get it before the president ASAP so they can talk about a victory and deliverables to the American people. So as you see from the headlines, finally, Infrastructure Week is here and has passed. Uh, this bill has passed the Senate back in August and had been waiting in the House and the White House celebrates the $1.2 trillion bill, which will provide millions of jobs for the country over the course of the next eight to 10 years. $1.2 trillion, which will send billions of dollars to all the states here in the country, will provide roads, bridges, clean drinking water, will get rid of all the lead drinking pipes, uh, physical infrastructure, airports, broadband, electric cars uh, infrastructure, electric grids, uh, upgrading our electrical uh, grids for the United States, our electrical infrastructure, um, pretty much anything having to do with physical infrastructure is in this bill. It was bipartisan, so we had some Republicans from the House and 19 Republicans from the Senate vote for it, including Mitch McConnell. And you can see here, even uh, they're kind of even joking here a little bit on this. After 4.5 years, Infrastructure Week is finally over. Quite an achievement. Both Republicans and Democrats have been trying to pass infrastructure like this uh, in a bipartisan way. Um, even though a lot of Republicans didn't vote for it this time around, mostly because Democrats are in control, Republicans have been trying to pass infrastructure for many, many years, and uh, that's why they did get some Republican votes, despite the fact that um, Democrats are in control. Uh, even Mitch McConnell voted for this bill. Now, everybody be clear here. This is the $1.2 trillion physical infrastructure package. Um, this was the bill that was passed in August in the Senate and is not the stimulus package that you might think of. This is part of the Build Back Better agenda, uh, but this is not the stimulus package that you might think of in terms of stimulus. This is the physical infrastructure package. This is not the package with the child tax credits. This is not the package with the paid family medical leave. This is not the package with the Medicare. Um, this is not the package with any of that. Um, so just to be clear there, this is the package with the physical infrastructure package. Now, just yesterday, um, the progressive Democrats and Pramila Jayapal was saying they weren't going to vote for this and that, that they were going to vote against it because the stimulus package was supposed to be voted on first. But somewhere along the lines last night, they made an agreement to uh, have moderate Democrats from the House sign a piece of paper saying that they will vote for the stimulus package in the House once a Congressional Budget Office score comes back. If it comes back to how they agree, 
that they will vote for it in the House uh, once it comes back here as soon as possible. They also did a test vote to see as soon as this Congressional Budget Office comes back, report basically the math on the bill. If the math comes on the bill, how they're expecting how they would vote on the stimulus package, and here's how that went down. You can see here House Democrats clear a test vote on the $1.75 trillion social spending bill, which is actually more probably around $1.85 trillion now that they've added in the paid family and medical leave and the prescription drug pricing to lower that for millions of Americans after the day of drama. So they passed the physical infrastructure package, but they also passed the test vote to basically say, um, once we get this Congressional Budget Office score back, how is everybody going to vote on the stimulus package in the House? So they wanted to see that. So basically they want to confirm how is everybody going to vote on this stimulus package here in the House if the Congressional Budget Office score, basically the math on the bill, if everything checks out how it's supposed to, how is everybody going to vote? Here's how it went down. House Democrats voted early Saturday to move forward with debate on the sweeping $1.75 trillion social spending plan. So the bill's ultimate fate remains uncertain after five moderates voiced concerns about its potential effects on the federal budget, basically saying they want the Congressional Budget Office to score the bill and give us their ruling on it. It passed with a 221 to 213 party line vote, which basically means all the Democrats voted yes in this test vote, and 213 Republicans all voted no, clearing the way for the House to consider and vote on the legislation known as the Build Back Better Act. So this might be a little confusing here, so let me just break this down for you. The stimulus package is not passed yet. This is a test vote. This is basically kind of advancing it. Um, the physical infrastructure package has passed. Stimulus package has not passed. It clears the way. I know this might be a little bit confusing here. That's why I'm trying to explain this the best way possible, okay? And then once it passed the House, it still has to go to the Senate, okay? This was a test vote to see once the Congressional Budget Office comes back with the report or the score, how they will vote. So basically, if the Congressional Budget Office comes back here, that basically all the Democrats put forward that they're all willing to vote yes here. All 221 Democrats are willing to vote yes here. So the bill is ready to pass. They're just waiting on the Congressional Budget Office to say, yeah, it is everything that the Democrats said. We have some moderate Democrats that, like Joe Manchin, but in the House, that are basically saying, we want to see the math. We want to see the pay-fors. We want to see how much the bill is going to cost, the actual cost of the bill. We actually want to see all the pay-fors, how much the actual pay-fors of the bill, how they're going to pay for it, how much that adds up to, how much the cost of the bill adds up to, all the math of the bill. Okay. So, uh, which makes sense because uh, if I was in Congress, whether I considered myself, if I even considered myself a Republican or a Democrat, if I considered myself a moderate or a progressive, I would want to see that. It only makes sense. Um, so, they're going to have that report come back. Then everybody's going to look at it and say, this makes sense or it doesn't make sense or everything is capiche or everything is not really right, or whatever it's going to say, right? If it says what they are saying it's going to say, then they're going to basically, that's why they did this test vote, and basically said, okay, if it comes back how we're, we expect it to say, how are you going to vote? And all the Democrats voted for it, which means it will pass. And of course, all the Republicans voted against it. So... Uh, as of right now, it's on track to pass. We're just waiting for the Congressional Budget Office report to come back. So the big thing then next, what will happen next is it would pass the House. Then it would go over to the Senate. Now, remember, Senator Joe Manchin wanted to see the Congressional Budget Office score this bill anyway. So 
this is something that needed to happen anyways because Joe Manchin would have requested this anyway. So this isn't really a delay per se because Joe Manchin would have requested it anyways. So we might as well get it done now because Joe Manchin would have needed it anyway. So might as well start getting the process of that done now because there's no way Joe Manchin would have voted for it without it. So now we'll have it. The House can see it. Joe Manchin can see it. Everybody can see it. And we'll have that process done. So that's good. Then it's going to go over to Joe Manchin and the Senate where they're going to need every single vote there. They can afford three people to vote no in the House. And every single person voted yes for it in the House. So as of right now, it's on track the stimulus package to be voted yes. Remember, the physical infrastructure package has now passed the House, passed the Senate, is going to the president's desk, and he is waiting to sign it. I will keep you updated and posted on that for the physical infrastructure package, $1.2 trillion, which will provide millions of jobs over the course of the next eight to 10 years, billions of dollars for every single state, and um, roads clean drinking water, bridges, physical infrastructure, airports, um, electric grids, electric cars, um, all sorts of things like that, broadband, um, you know, pretty much all sorts of stuff like that. So remember that there was kind of a tie-in between those two packages, and now there's not. But remember that I originally said I didn't really think they needed those two to be tied together, if you remember that. So now they're not really tied together. So now the stimulus package is on its own. But remember that um, they actually passed the stimulus package and then did the test vote, and still all the House Democrats voted yes for it. Joe Manchin is a kind of a different story. He's kind of this rogue Democrat uh, that's kind of often right field because he leans right towards Republicans, and he's kind of rogue. Now, remember that like, if Joe Manchin threatens to vote no on, for whatever reason, they still have to pass something because they have to pass the debt limit, okay? Remember, that's going to come up around December 3rd, and they have to do that or else the country will literally default for the first time ever, and run out of money. The default is where the, the Treasury will literally run out of money. They have to pass a debt limit to have the right or the ability to literally print money. The government has to print money just to survive, just to pay the interest on our debt obligations, just to fulfill our past debt obligations. And we're going to need to do that sometime by around December 3rd is the estimated date. Could be a little bit before that, could be a little bit after that. Remember, the Treasury has already continued on its extraordinary measures because, well, uh, the Treasury's not playing any games this time around. Um, so here we are kind of in the same situation again. And remember, this time around, that's why I just kind of I thought it was a mistake. And again, I, I don't choose sides, but I thought it was a mistake that Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer blasted the 11 Republicans that helped him, Mitch McConnell and 10 other Republicans, when they helped him pass the debt limit. Because now, granted, the 11 Republicans kind of did their job, but the other 39 really didn't because kind of their job is to keep the country open, keep the country going, keep the country from defaulting. And if I was a Senate majority leader and if I was a Democrat, I would have went over and thanked the 11 Republicans and said, thank you for doing your job. At least you helped us keep the country from defaulting. Instead, he blasted all the Republicans for delaying it. And I mean, I get it. The problem is now... No Republicans are going to help this time around, right? And here we are with the stimulus package. And he's now the Republicans are saying, we're not going to help you at all this time around at all with the debt limit. And the debt limit is a, such, such a big thing because the country would literally default. And 
if the country defaults, it's like catastrophic. It's like the worst thing ever. Um, They've, yeah, and you've heard the president say it. You've heard the senator say it. Social security payments might not go out. They could be delayed. The child tax credit payments might not go out, would be delayed. The December 15th payment for child tax credits might not even go out because de December 3rd is before then. And um, bond payments might not go out. The full faith and credit of the United States would crash. Stock market would crash. Pensions, 401ks. The economy, like literally everything having to do with the economy. I mean, this is this is not a government shutdown. This is a the full faith and credit of the United States. It's just like catastrophic, right? So we're here we are in this position again in less than 30 days. And the Democrats are basically in this position now where they have to pass this debt limit on their own because the Republicans are refusing to help this time around. Because the Democrat, or at least Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, slammed them after the few Republicans helped them. So whether you, whoever you think is right or wrong, you can kind of place blame on both parties here. And it's just, it's just a shame that neither party can ever get along with the other for more than two minutes, right? So here we are. The Democrats have to pass the stimulus package for so many different reasons. One of them being we have to prevent the country from defaulting, literally defaulting on our debt obligations and to keep Social Security payments going out, child tax credit payments going out, payments to the military, payments to our, our local governments, state local governments, cities and service members and bond member, bond payments, interest and prevent 401ks and pensions from crash. And it's just it's just an absolute nightmare yet again. And here we are in this predicament, and there's just so many reasons we have to pass this next stimulus package. <laughs> yeah, so um, so now we, we have the House set up saying they did a test vote. They're ready to pass the package. All the Democrats voted yes in the test vote. Saying we all want we we have all voted yes in a test vote. They've all approved of it. So they're all ready and willing to vote yes. They're just not ready and willing to vote yes until they get the Congressional Budget Office score back. And I get it, it makes sense. They all want to make sure that the bill is what they're saying it is, right? I get it, because I mean it kind of makes sense. If you're going to buy a house and let's just say you're buying a $200,000 house, right? Yeah, you, you want to make sure that the inspection report is right, that the house isn't leaking gas, the foundation is right, it's not doesn't have a cracked foundation and that when you go to do the title and you go to do the the mortgage that the the interest rate is actually 5%, it's the interest rate isn't actually 37%, right? And then when you go to do the payments, your payments are a thousand dollars a month instead of four thousand seven hundred dollars a month, right? You want to actually like read through the paperwork, right, and make sure that everything is as it is, right? So this Congressional Budget Office report is actually like the official paperwork of telling everybody and the congressmen and the senators, hey, here's the math on the entire bill and how much the bill is going to actually cost and how much the pay fors the tax raises and everything in there is actually going to be now remember this bill has literally just been changing up to like yesterday and could change even yet again and remember that when the house passes the bill then they're going to send the bill over to the senate and it's very likely the Senate is going to change the bill as well for several different reasons. One, history tells us that the Senate's probably going to change the bill. Two, because the House and Senate just tend to change the bill. So just keep in mind that's probably going to happen. Two, the Senate parliamentarian is probably going to rule some things out. Okay, um, And Joe Manchin is probably going to vote along with the Senate parliamentarian. Anything that the parliamentarian rules out, 
Joe Manchin is probably going to say, no, I agree with the parliamentarian. I'm not going to vote against her. That's just generally how Joe Manchin is. And remember, they don't get every vote from the Senate. It doesn't, it doesn't pass. Okay. So anything that parliamentarian rules out will probably not pass. So for example, the parliamentarian has already ruled that immigration uh, cannot be in the stimulus package, but the House has several immigration things in the package. So that, that doesn't necessarily mean that the parliamentarian will rule out every piece of immigration, but if she does, or if she rules out anything, then the Senate will probably change that or remove that. Okay, so keep that in mind. Also, Joe Manchin is kind of against a couple things in this package, like paid family and medical leave. So just as one example. So if it gets over to the Senate and Joe Manchin holds firm and well, let, let me back up there because I just seen a recent interview on paid family and medical leave and I showed it to you on the channel and you've seen it. Okay. You've seen what he said. He actually said he's for paid family and medical leave. He's just not for the way it is in this package. What he actually wants it to be done is he wants it to be passed in a separate package in a bipartisan way, which, well, you know what that means. That means taking it out of this package, getting Republicans to agree on it, getting Republicans and Democrats to agree on anything is, is a whole different ball game, right? It's very, very more difficult, right? He also wants employers to pay into it, to pay a portion of it, kind of like how Social Security is, where employers will pay half and some something along those lines. And that's just a whole different ballgame, right? So if we just if we take out paid family and medical leave where uh, like women that are pregnant wouldn't get the paid four weeks of paid leave uh, when they have birth and people that are having the illness um, wouldn't get four weeks of paid leave. It, it, it would it would be just significant significantly delayed if passed ever right so it's either like we pass it now the government pays for it through these tax raises that are all included right now or Joe Manchin takes it out of the bill and maybe it gets passed down the road maybe through a significantly different bill, and then employers have to pay for it through their own pocket, which means small businesses and large businesses pay for it directly out of the business instead of the, the tax hikes paying for it, which are already kind of paid for. So very, very different ball game. And instead of people getting paid family and medical leave now, maybe they get it in the future. You tell me what's better. Again, that's just one of the stimulus items in this package. Paid family medical leave, especially for women, pregnant women that go to have babies, um, you'd much rather have it happen now because if, ands, and buts may happen in the future, and they may not. So, who's kidding who? We'd rather have it just happen now because that might never happen. It might happen five years in the future, two years in the future. It might never happen. So that's what Joe Manchin says he's for it, but it also could never happen. So, yeah. So I will keep you up to date here. There's literally a lot going on here. Things are changing here by the moment. Uh, make sure to subscribe down below. I'll keep you up to date. New videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The physical infrastructure package is passed. Um, that is something that both Republicans and Democrats have been trying to pass for years now. So finally, there is something passed uh, for the country on physical infrastructure package. Uh, we've had three stimulus package passed so far, and now they're working on a fourth stimulus package for the people. There is going to be several different uh, stimulus provisions in there for the people um, that are going to kind of be targeted. And well, we're going to have to see what is going to be in there. So I will keep you up to date here. You can click here to watch my newest stimulus package video next. And this video is how you can get rent assistance. You can get your rent paid for three months to 12 months paid for from the last stimulus package. And it is still available right now in all 50 states. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks, guys. And I will see you in the next video.